Well, good morning, Knicks Nation. It is Sunday, November 22nd, 2020, and I'm doing a special video this morning <clears throat> because, as you know, uh, free agency is ending at 12 noon today. All these deals can be signed at 12 noon today. So let's talk about the Knicks. In all of, first of all, let's just say, let me just say, they did not sign Fred Van Fleet, as you know. They did not sign Malik Beasley, who was, I was looking at that. I was looking forward to that. They did not sign Gordon Hayward, who wasn't even something we were looking at. And Bogdan Bogdanovich is not signed at this point, and we don't know what's going on. We've heard the Hawks and the Indiana Pacers are looking at him, and I am now doubtful that the Knicks will obtain him, and I'll tell you why. In all the videos that you have seen that I have done regarding free agency with the Knicks, starting a couple of months ago, there's one word I kept mentioning, and you guys know when you look at the video, that word is overpay. I said that the Knicks are going to have to overpay, right? I said, if they wanted Fred Van Fleet, are you willing to pay $22 million a year for $88 million? right? I said that if everyone's looking at Christian Wood, we'll probably have to go higher, right? So I kept using the word overpay because the premise was if the Knicks were going to get players in here because of how bad our team had been, we would have to overpay. What I was surprised, at first I was shocked a little bit. I mean, they signed, they started off with Ed Davis and I like that signing because Ed Davis is a roughneck. Five million, all these guys, one year deals. And that's very important to understand for a number of reasons, but one year deal for him. I said they were going to bring in a pro level shooter <laughs> and they did. Alec Burks <laughs> for six million dollars. They went to the cheap aisle for him. Okay. And then of course, uh, they brought in Nerlens Noel, and I, I'm still a little confused about that because of Julius Randle. We'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, Alfred Payton. Now, the Payton signing bothered me, for, and it bothered a number of y'all. But for me, it's like if you had a nightmare, right, and there were people in the nightmare, and it scared you. And then sometime later, you see one of the people again. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like reminding you of the nightmare. And so <clears throat> when they signed Alfred Payton, I was like, oh, shoot. But then I step back and look at the whole situation. Alfred Payton, Nerlens Noel, Alec Burke, and Ed Davis are on one-year deals, which means that these the likelihood of them coming back next year is very small, right? Um, which means that we're going to get kind of, I mean, what, what I wanted and what a lot of you guys wanted in Knicks Nation, you wanted them to play the youth and to see what they got with the youth. We're going to see that. that. That's what they're going to do. Okay. They're going to play the youth and they're going to see what they have. None of these guys, I, I don't think any of these guys are going to start. I don't think Peyton's going to start. People, as soon as, um, uh, they signed Peyton, ESPN penciled him as a starter. I'm not so sure he's going to start. Now, one of the things <clears throat> all of these guys have in common is they play defense. Peyton plays defense. Noel plays defense. Burks plays defense. And of course, Ed Davis play, uh, uh, plays defense. They all play defense. Okay, so, so that being the case, we know we have a defensive coach. We can understand what we're going to have. And people are already writing off the Knicks. They're already writing them off. Oh, this is a tank season. Let's, let me get this straight from, you know, from Raw Hebrew on my channel. Let me tell you right here. The Knicks ain't tanking. The Knicks are not tanking. Okay. People may look at our roster and say, well, they can't win. I told y'all the most important talent the Knicks inherited or acquired this past season, this off season is Tom Thibodeau. It's Kenny Payne. Okay. It's Johnny Bryant. It's Walt Perrin. It's Mike Woodson. That's the talent. And the most important strategic thing they've done is actually have a real strategy. Okay? And the strategy is develop the youth. The best players we acquired this year, the best players, Obi Toppin and Emmanuel Quickly. We got them from the draft. Okay? They're, these two kids, are we better than all these guys? All right? I expect Toppin to start, which is bringing me to Julius Randle. Okay, 
when they signed Ed Davis, I was like, okay, when they, when, first let's go back before that. When they drafted Obi Toppin at eight, I'm still saying to y'all, he's the starting four. And from last April and May, the Knicks have put out that they are looking for a stretch four. And of course, we were looking at people like Christian Wood, Jeremy Grant, um, Davis Bertans. We were looking at stretch four. But uh, we also know, and I, I said this, and we all know this, this is for Knicks Nation, when they drafted Obi, they didn't need all those guys now because they just drafted a legit stretch four. So I'm thinking, okay, so they got the stretch four. Julius Randle has to be traded. Unless I said to y'all, he agrees to come off the bench. And he might. So then, they get Ed Davis. He's a backup five and a backup four. So now I'm thinking, okay, that's no problem. Okay, so you got Julius Randle backing up five also. I, I still, if I had to choose between Ed Davis as a backup five and Julius Randle, I'm choosing Julius Randle 10 times out of 10 as a backup five. I told you, he's a tremendous backup five. And I think he's a tremendous third option. He is not a first option. Y'all many of y'all not hearing that. I'm trying to say, Julius Randle's a terrible first option. But as a third option, he's really good. And as a backup five, yeah, he's really good. And he's on an inspiring deal. Okay, so I'm still wondering what happened. So then when when they signed Northern's no well, now I'm I'm really not sure what's going on, brethren, because we got Mitch as the starting five. I love Norland's Noel as his backup. That's like Mitchell Robinson part two. <laughs> you know, you got Mitchell Robinson, then you got another Mitchell Robinson coming on the bench right behind me, not missing a beat. I love that. But what about Julius Randle? What are we going to do? Because now you got Kevin Knox got to get some time. And I believe they're going to give, they're going to give the youth some playing time this year. So Kevin Knox got to get some time. Okay. You know you start no be topping. What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. I still don't understand. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm going to trust them. What they did, we have 40 million in cash space. They only used, they only used $21 million on a one year deals. We still got 20 million in cash space. Okay. I love that. They, they really did well. I like that. So now you're going to have the youth getting their time. Now, one thing also I'm excited about, and y'all should be excited about this too. You remember two years ago, about this time, maybe a little earlier than that, two years ago, Fisdale said, I'm running this. You're going to keep what you kill. Remember that? He said, you're going to keep what you kill. We know he was, we could look back now. I know he was full of it, right? We know he was. He was just a, a used car salesman. And so he didn't do anything he said he was going to do. Okay. He said he's going to stress defense. That didn't happen either. They didn't even put defensive players on the floor most of the time. Okay. But with Tom Thibodeau, it's going to be keep what you kill. And I'm excited about that. Which means when they go into training camp, put up or shut up. It's put up or shut up. Now, I believe he's going to favor certain players. Like he's going to favor RJ Barrett and he needs to. Um, he's going to favor the young players that are on their last year of their deal, like a Frank Nilakina and a Dennis Smith Jr. <clears throat> he's going to favor those guys in terms of, he's going to give them every opportunity, I believe, to play and to show what they have. He's going to do that. That's why I'm not so sure Alfred Payton is starting this year, but he's going to show, he's going to show these guys some favor in terms of saying what they got, because this, this is the year they got to put up a shutter. All these other cats, EP is in his eighth year. Uh, Nolan's Noel is like in his eighth year. Burke is like in his seventh, eighth year. Ed Davis is a veteran. These guys are just here. Like, what, what were we saying before? We don't want guys coming in that's going to hinder the growth of the guys we got. They got a development staff now, right? We know they got a development staff. Let me tell you what. They did not bring in the development staff to develop Ed Davis. They did not bring in the development staff to develop Alec Burke. They did not bring in the development staff to develop Nerlens Noel or Alfred Payton. These guys are what they are. They're in their seventh, eighth, ninth years in the league. They're not changing. This is what they are. These guys are supplements to the youth. Okay. And that's what we want. That's what we want. The youth are going to get developed. 
This is, I'm excited about this. And let me tell you this too. I told you before. Hey, listen, if we win 10 to 6, because we playing D and nobody can shoot, I'm cool with that. You got to start somewhere. The foundation is defense. You understand? Basketball games in the 82 game and this year's 72 game season, you can win basketball games by out, you know, by offensiving, out offensiving your opponent. Like you could just focus on scoring and win some basketball games. You could. But championships are won on the defensive end. Championships are won when you're able to stop a team at crunch time. And you can't suddenly do that unless you've developed that character and identity already. It's got to be something you have. You can't just suddenly do it. Okay. And so championships, when it comes down to crunch time in a playoff game, defense wins. Okay. You, you got to get stops. Okay. So the, the Knicks this year, you're going to see a focus on defense. And I don't, you know, I heard one commentator, I'm not going to say their name because I respect them, but I'm saying, talking about, you know, you're going to see the Knicks getting blown out. Hell no. No. The Knicks are going to, as long as they are playing high level defense, they may lose games. They're going to lose games, but they're going to be in every game. And you ain't going to see a Tom Thibodeau team give up. That's not going to happen. Uh-uh. No. So that's why they brought in these vets. EP. He can't shoot foul shots. He can't shoot jump shots. He can only shoot layups, okay? But he plays defense. And he plays. Okay? He does. Nerlens Noel, defense. Ed Davis, roughneck defense. Roughneck defense. Okay? And then Burke can shoot a little bit. He's a pro-level shooter. I mean, I was not expecting him. I, I wasn't. But what I liked is, let's go one by one. They offered, they offered, uh, Hayward three years, 70 million. Hayward was looking for four years. They said, no, no. Fred Van Fleet, they said, they said, no, we're not going to go 22 million a year. No. And I told you all the market for his services is Malcolm Brogdon's contract. And that's exactly what he got. Four years, 85 million. Remember? That was Marcus, that was Malcolm Brogdon's contract with, 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 uh, the Pacers. That was the market. And that's what he got. Knicks weren't willing to pay. They said, no. Beasley, they were going to go, I told y'all, three years, 42, three years, 48. He wanted four years. He got four years, 60 from, from Minnesota. Nick said no. Even with Beasley, and I like Beasley, and he fits the timeline. But they said no. No. Right? Now, Bogdanovich looking for four years, 72 million. Based on what the Knicks have been doing already, I can tell you right now, they probably, that ain't going to happen. Because they're not, they're not overpaying. I, I'm really surprised at that. I expect it. I came in with the mindset they're going to have to overpay to bring in some talent. Papa Rose said, I got the bag, but I'm not just opening it for anybody. He just, he, no. So this changes things. Let me tell you why this changes things for next year. I had told y'all previously that we got to look long term. And I still believe that. We got to look long term building this team from the ground up through the draft, right? But if Thibodeau can get 35 wins out of this team, maybe 40, and if he does that, some people are going to pop. Some people are going to show up. Some people are going to blow up. And then they're going to have a lot of money. Because one thing this year showed me, like, for example, let's look at Danilo Gallinari. I figured, oh, he's going to Miami. They got $20 million in cash space. He's going to get like a one or two year deal. I even said the Knicks would get him on a short term deal, two years, 40 million. Man, this cat went to Atlanta and got three years, 60 million. This dude, 32 years old. Talking about he wanted to win. <laughs> he said he wanted to win. So he, I was, oh, he's going to Miami or he's going to the Lakers. He went to Atlanta, won 21 games. He went to Atlanta because that's where the bag was. Okay. We could have got, let me tell you right now, we could have got any of these guys. If we were willing to pay that money, we would we could have got them. But they weren't willing to overpay in this in this free agent market. I was surprised, but that's I'm happy about that. So now next year, when big fish come on the market, we might be in the game. We might be in the game. Think about it now. Julius Randle is not going to be on. Either they trade him or don't. This is his, his option, team option. They're not going to exercise no 19 million on him next year. They got to pay him four, so that's 15 million in saving. We got the 21 million right here from these guys. So that's 36. Okay. And then there's more. I mean, we're going to have some cap space next year. And, and like I said, if Thibodeau could whip these cats into some short, you know, into like 35 wins 
and don't let them get over 40, we might be a destination next year. Okay. Then you got Frank, you got Dennis Smith Jr. And you got, that's it. You got Frank and Dennis Smith Jr. Aside from the guys I named, you got Frank and Dennis Smith Jr. Um, I, I, I favor Frank. As you know, I'm, a, I'm Frank Nitty fan, Frank Nitty sub nation of Nick Nation for sure. I like Dennis Smith Jr., but I'm going to tell you what, one of them ain't going to be here next year. Both of them ain't, ain't coming back next year. So without whichever one, and I'm hoping Frank stays, but whichever one, because I like Dennis Smith Jr., but I like Frank better, but whoever, whichever one, that's another five million. So you're talking about five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then, you know, with the four guys we signed, five, 10, 15, 20, 21 million plus five million there, that's 26 million plus, you know, Ju- Julius Randle, that's 41 million in cap space. Again, next year, 41 million in cap space. Okay. Now they're going to probably try. I would think they're going to extend Mitchell Robinson. I would think they're going to extend either Frank or Dennis Smith Jr. So that's going to eat something up, but, um, we're in good shape. We could get a max level player next year or two. We'll see. It depends on how you develop. Now I'm telling you right now. I, I, I don't know how, I mean, Obi Toppins at the starting four. That does open the floor for RJ. But from the top, from between Burt and Quigley, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, you know, we're going to see how this plays out because I would have liked another shooter. I mean, a, Burke is not a starting level shooter. He's not. He's an off the bench shooter. I would have liked a starting level shooter at the two spot. Because that would really open up the floor for RJ. Because if you get two shooters out there, you know, he, he's going to go off. But we still got Reggie Bullock. So we got Reggie still. He he could start, even though I always look at him also as a bench piece. Um, You know, but, and we don't have Dot no more. But, and uh, you know, so Reggie Bullock could start. Um, I don't see Alec Burke as a starter. You know, I don't, I don't. So let's see what happens. But that's what my only issue. We needed, I felt like we needed another shooter to open things up. Now we got quickly, but he, remember, he's a rookie, man. Come on. And, you know, he's not going, he's not going to start. He's not going to start. He'll come off the bench. But, and I think eventually he'll start. Like he might start next year, but this year he could come off the bench. But they, but I, that's the only question I have. I, I wanted one more starting shooter. That we could, you know, open up the floor for RJ because that's the key right here. RJ, everything they said they got built around him. Anyway, I'm happy overall. I, I mean, when I step back and look at it, the Knicks did not overpay for anybody. They said three years max for anybody. If you don't want that, you keep stepping. And they, and they that's how they went because some of these guys got over crazy. Are you kidding? I mean, four years, 120 million for Gordon Haywood? Hell no. no I'm glad we didn't do that. And I'm glad we didn't pay Gallinari you no know, three years, 60 million. Hell no. No. I would have done the Malik Beasley deal. I ain't going to front. I would have done the Malik, I would have done the Malik Beasley deal. I would have given him 460. I would have given him maybe a little more than that. I like that kid, but the Knicks have a strategy and they're sticking to it. And I respect that. And so, no. So brethren, don't worry. Don't fret. We in good shape. They're going to play the youth this year. No, we not winning no championship, but we already knew that. We already knew that, right? Like I said, we're looking for 35 wins, okay? And I'm telling you, Thibodeau and crew are going to put foots in behind, and we're going to get some W's up in here. On the defensive end, we're going to play like we like we really need to be playing on defense. Watch, and I'm happy about that. The only question mark still, Julius Randle, and I don't know what's going to happen with him. I don't see. He's not starting at the four. He's not starting at the five. So are they bringing him off the bench? And if they are, why do you have Ed Davis? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to find out, though. So, brethren, rejoice. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Knicks in good shape. They got a strategy. We build new youth. Please don't use that tanking word. We're not tanking. Now, we might lose games because we're playing youth, but I don't think we're going to lose as many as people think because we're playing defense this year. Even last year. We could have won more games if they played some defense. You know, if, if, if Thibodeau, I mean, that's Thibodeau, if they're going, Fisdale knew anything about defense, we could have won. He only won four games before he was fired. Lost 17. We could have won like four, at least four more, let's say four or five more. And if you gave Miller this team from the beginning of last year, I think we would have won 32, 33, 35 games. 
But now you got a crew from training camp. I can see 35 wins, y'all. And it's going to be starting on the defensive end. Tell me what y'all think. Don't, don't fret. Don't fret, Knicks Nation. Don't want. We getting ready. Get ready. We building, man. Building through the draft. Doing it right way. Shalom.